Hi folks, Brian here. I have some live shows coming up you may be interested in. As Trey Magnifique, that's my smooth jazz sax guy, I'm going to be doing holiday shows on Wednesday, December 4th in L.A., uh, Friday, December 6th in Boston, and Saturday, December 7th in New York. You can go to TreyMagnifique.com to get tickets for those. And also, Ninja Sex Party, we just announced our 2025 tour. We're going all over the U.S. and Canada. Go to NinjaSexParty.com to get tickets for that. And, of course, as always, go to Patreon.com slash night to support this show over there and get video versions of pretty much all of our episodes, including this one, um, and just to support the show in general. All right, thanks for being here. Enjoy the show. Brian, I, 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 I have a grievance. Tell me. I'm going to act like I haven't already texted you about. Well, oh, wait, hold on. You're going to, I believe everybody, this is the first time you've ever been a hater about something. So why don't we, I love that eye roll. There we go. Off to a good start. That's, that's, that's how we do it here, folks. It's off mm -hmm. to the races. You know, when there, there's a race, somebody shoots in the air for this podcast, I roll my eyes. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what, what's your grievance? My grievance is that I think that the purple category on yesterday's connect New York Times connections was bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who don't play connections, do tell. It's how would you describe connections? Uh, you are given sixteen things that you have to group into four categories in uh, often non-intuitive ways. Yes, and there are the colors correspond with like the difficulty of the category. Well, is... so so what happens is you group them. You're given right. four words or phrases, sorry, 16 words or phrases, and you have to find the four groups that they fall into. And once you pick a group of four that is correct, that is given a color. Yeah. So blue, yellow, green, purple. Sort of a process of elimination until you get to the last four that have to be together. Uh, and there's, yeah. you know, a sort of implied difficulty along with the colors with purple being the most arcane. So mm -hmm. as examples of connections, themes, and words, it'll be like uh, words that come before a roll. So there's like egg and California. Jelly. Jelly, yeah. Um, so it's you trying to figure out what the connections mm. are. Uh, and yesterday's category, I got down to the last four words, which you can't look at the archive. I wish I could just read what the words were. But uh, uh, it was, let's see, Democrat, defense, drive and dimension, I believe, if I'm I'm doing that from memory. But I think that's right. Yes, I, I do think you're right. So listeners, take a moment. <laughs> a to... phrase that I think you should get used to saying a lot more often, Layden. What is? I do think you're right. Oh, on this podcast. We'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're right. Uh but I, I had the last four and I was trying to string them together because, you know, even when you get to the last four, I like to try to figure out what the category would have been had Same. I gotten it. Because mm -hmm. that's that's the game. That's what that, that's what a, an adult does. Yeah. And derisively, I was like, oh, what? They all start with D? <laughs> that, that's basically what the clue was. It was it, it's a yeah. little bit more. It's like what D can stand for. But. That's exactly the same as starts with a D. Pretty much. Yeah, I, I thought that was, look, I, I you know, uh, I'm not afraid to speak truth to power when the occasion arises. And I agree with you on this one. I think that was a bullshit category because it's too obvious. Yes. It's just like. Well, and it's it so feel, obvious it's not... that you don't even consider doing it because you're like, New York Times, you're smarter than this. But I guess. Not. Well, it is true. Not all D words uh you don't use d as an abbreviation for yeah them. yeah they're d, they're d's used in abbreviations but that's that is not yeah. up to the fucking standard no i agree with that um yeah but yeah no, since what? i i used to never touch connections because i didn't understand it until we did it together on a mini that is the one that i beeline to every single day that that was your first time doing connections when we did it on a mini I mean, my first time committing to it, I definitely messed with it previously and been like, I don't understand what the bit is here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's pretty fun. 
Uh, yeah, I like I do it more or less every day. I have I've as have we as we have discussed with uh, Deb Amlin, uh, I have a agenda every day, which is spelling bee, then wordle, then strands, then connections. Now, yesterday I actually broke that uh, agenda because a the spelling bee was fucking hard yesterday. It took what me was the pangram? Bathroom. Fuck. You know. Which I know, because it's that place where I do pretty much all my work. Yeah. That's the room in the house I spend most my most productive hours. I yeah. always get stuck when it is kind of a compound word like that, because I just don't well, think about it as like, this is a word. That is a thing that when I'm thinking about the pangram, if I can't get it, I often look for compound words because I notice that I get stuck there. Yeah. Um, so, but it took me a while. But the other ones, there were some fucking... Okay, I'm going to read you some of the words, because this like... Some of these really bugged me. All right, I'm looking at spell. Oh, no, yesterday's spelling bee is what I want. And I'm going to look at the answers right now. I'm going to tell you some of these words. Admire okay. this puzzle. There we go. Admire this puzzle. Answer. Okay, ready? Yeah. Uh, a throb. Which is, I, I believe, to use that in a sentence, uh, the dick was all a throb. Yeah. With excitement. Weird. Uh, that one I didn't like. Now, this word I just don't know, but it has something that I think you're going to like because I know I like it. It's haboob. That is H-A-boob. Yeah, that's a, that is Which is what word. I see when I see a boob. Ha! Ah, boob! But I also don't know what it means. Can, here. Uh, do this work for me. Look up haboob. You love typing, as we established on the mini. Look up what haboob means. It's a type of intense dust storm. Oh, cool. Also, Spelling yeah. Bee has dark mode now. They added it, oh, it in does. between me doing it this morning and hopping on now. Look at that. I would just like to say for the Whoa. record, everyone. I didn't even notice that. Would as I as mode? I usually did, I do a cup. I do. I get the pangram and stop. Um, that's mm -hmm. not focusing. But nobody just, can. Nobody can see that. No, it's fine. I, I'm just pointing out that you can spell cunty in this one, but they oh won't yes, you can. Uh, wait, where do you see the dark mode? It just. Option. I opened it. To continue what? the puzzle and it was like there's a dark mode now oh, i guess i don't have that maybe it's an android only thing if you click know. the settings the gear icon god this is riveting uh, yeah we're good good podcasting as always all right i'm not going to do that right now um uh but yeah i but a throb i was like see so but it wouldn't accept by the way thar as in thar, thar she, she blows, blows. Which yeah which i understand okay is a, a throb though that's the thing. Which word do you say more, thar or a throb? I I think I've I've I'm not sure I've ever uttered the word a throb prior to I, this episode, but I've certainly said thar a lot. Thank you. I did, I was not aware a throb was a word. I I have never no. Or if I had said that, I would have thought I'm being clever here. That's that's it's modest. like people who say shat as the past tense of shit. That's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm doing a little language thing. Yay. Uh, yeah. That's what that's how I would have uttered the word a throb. A throb is bodice ripper coded. Mm -hmm. Very. Yes, definitely. Yes. She was a throb with desire. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This the members come next. Like the, the yeah. en engorged. <laughs> yes. <laughs> legally, legally, I can't be a throb anymore. Hmm. I get I get in trouble. I get put on a list. Yeah. You're being monitored. That's it. You've heard of ankle monitors. <laughs> yeah. No, finish that thought. Yes, please. <laughs> Where are we going with this? No, I'm just saying that everyone's heard of ankle monitors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's uh, it. So get ready for wankle monitors. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christ. Mm -hmm. It's, is there a, what, what would that be? It's a version of a chastity belt, except it only prevents you from jerking off. Mm -hmm. Now that's a million dollar idea. <laughs> Brian, congrats. You've reinvented the cock cage slash cock ring just for the for the penitentiary system. Well, I have to I have to make a, a phone call to get the patent rights for that. <laughs> I'm gonna send it to myself in a uh, sealed envelope. You know what's really beautiful is uh patent illustrations. There's one. They in, are yes. I, that's that's a whole art form. They're they're so satisfying. My favorite one ever is the patent illustration for the Twister uh, 
what is it, ride it out <laughs> attraction, the defunct attraction at Universal Studios Hollywood. The drawings of the ride design are the most beautiful mm. thing in the world. Uh, well, did you know, actually, at the L.A. Public Library downtown, uh, they have a whole exhibit on patent art going on really? right now. Yes, including 3D models. Because I guess okay. apparent, well, I think mostly 3D models. Apparently, back in the day, if you were going to file a patent for some kind of thing, at least for some period of time, you needed to include a 3D model of how the thing would work. So they have a bunch of these from like the 19th century. That sounds awesome. Okay, I found cool? it. I found the one that I was looking for. I'm going to text it to you. Like, okay. this would be the coolest tattoo in the world. Mm -hmm. There you go. You texted it, not chatted it. I did, because it's an image. All right, I'm waiting. This is the best part of the show, when I wait for, where we wait for texts to come No, in. I think the best part of the show is when you open a YouTube video and then you watch it in silence for two minutes. Oh, yeah, I agree. And Look then say that, that oh, I can't talk. Is that that's not fantastic. a gorgeous drawing? That is very cool. It looks like an editorial cartoon. Right? I it looks like a paint by numbers, it. actually, is what it looks like. Oh my God, that would be so much fun to do that as a paint by numbers. And that perfect F on the fig too. Ooh, mm -hmm. text treatment, mm -hmm. sexy. So is that supposed to be Bill Paxton and Helen Hunt? It is. Wow. That's great. I should see the new Twister movie. I only watched Twister for the first time this year. I'm Same. sure the sequel is great. <laughs> uh, it's gotta be great. I hear there's uh, even more cows. Wait, did you finally watch it? Yeah, uh, we watched it uh, with Rachel. The whole family watched it. Well, the, not the sequel, the original. Yeah, because when we talked about it, you hadn't seen it, right? That's It was in the last like couple of months. Oh, we didn't talk about this. What were your thoughts Ooh. on Twister? Uh, a, gotta love young Philip Seymour Hoffman. Fantastic. King sucks owned my heart. <laughs> All, all sorts of like '90s character actors, amazing. Like the the bench is deep with that movie. Yeah, uh, I forget who else is a uh, fuck. Who's in it? Hold on, there was Carrie a guy Elvis. where I was like, well, yes, but there there was one of the like the my, I have to look this up. One of the 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 crew. Uh, I was like, whoa, that guy. Oh, uh, Todd Field. I didn't even look. I think Todd oh. Field is in it as an actor. Um, or is it Fields? I can never remember. Um, For some reason, my brain wants to be like, yeah, Polly Shore is in that movie. Because <laughs> it's just a certain... Alan Ruck, right? Alan of Ruck, yes. Yes, I was right. Todd Field. Uh, Jeremy Davies, who is always fantastic. Uh, Patrick Fischler, who I love seeing. Oh, Patrick um, Fischler. Yeah. Joey, of... Joey Slotnick. Yep. Jake Busey. Uh, yeah. Like, lots of Lots of people. Yeah. Um, in it but uh i i don't know I, I it did the conceit that all these storm chasers are chasing tornadoes and they just happen to be in exactly the right place for successive tornadoes of increasing frequency or, or uh ferocity whatever it is yeah. to happen is uh, that that takes a that's a heavy lift uh conceptually well, the, the movie makes you get on board with that immediately, where it's like, yeah, Helen Hunt's dad totally got sucked off that door from that tornado. He totally, wait, he totally got what? He got sucked off that door. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, no, no, I, I, I'm not quite good. I think the internet's cutting out. Can you just say the words after he got? <laughs> Bro got I, I, sucked I, I, off is, that I'm, door. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't want the rest of it. I just want the words after got. Sucked off that door. Except take off the last two words of that. <laughs> We're not and doing just tell it. Me, We're tell not me, doing it. Like, my internet, if you my want internet it, keeps if cutting you out. Want I'm not, it, you I'm can not, cut no, no, it out yourself. This is a legitimate, for no, no, your this enjoyment is a legitimate later. thing. This is a legitimate thing I'm asking you as a professional broadcaster. Please just tell me the two words so I can put them in for editing purposes because <laughs> I keep losing it. For editing purposes, just put, tell me what were the words after he got. Just the two words after that. I don't know what we're talking about. Say the words sucked off. <laughs> no. I already no. said them like five times, Brian. I'm not said doing what? this bit. I'm not doing this bit. This isn't a bit. This is for me. When I edit this show, 
work that I, I'm happy to do, by the way. Not that you've ever said thank you, but yes, I'm happy to do it. And uh, when I edit the show occasionally, I need to, you know, I'll ask you for drop-ins occasionally. And right now I can tell, given the way the internet is being, that I, could, I just need you to say those two words so I can, I can use them for, for the show that we do together. Everyone, this is Late Night with Brian Wecht. I'm late. You're not going to say it? No. Uh, okay. Uh, my name is Sucked Off. Yeah. I'm Brian Wecht. And that's, yeah, that's, hey, it me, the guy with the uncooperative co-host. I hate it when people say it me. I know. Me too. Mm -hmm. It me. It me. Yeah. I know that we spent like a whole mini yesterday talking about the substance, but can I just say that I'm still mad about the substance? And yeah, well, that hot take was confined to uh, the penitentiary of a mini episode. So why don't you give your uh, a short version of your hot substance take? Um, it, I didn't like it. I had a fun time watching it. I think it's a fun and cute movie. I don't think it's a good movie. And there are a lot of things about it that really bothered me. And mm -hmm. one of the most egregious examples is how hard it's cribbing from like 20 different movies in the most obvious way possible. But like these other movies don't have thematic parody with what's happening in the substance. So it's more of just like, <laughs> you guys like The Shining, right? Like, stop it. Uh, stop reminding me of movies I wish I was watching. And so last night as a, I was in a funk and I was like, I'm gonna watch one of the movies that the substance is ripping off because all of them are better than this movie. And I picked Showgirls. Mm -hmm. uh, that's... A movie, I, now that movie I've never seen. Oh my God, Brian. Mm -hmm. Showgirls commentary win. I would happily watch it. It has a lot of people. I like Dude, it. I love I, Gina Gershon. She's the best. She is the best. Um, Showgirls is in my top 10 for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not an ironic enjoyment. I think it's a genuinely great movie. I think that mm -hmm. it's dumb that everybody looks at Paul Verhoeven's other movies and are like, ha ha, satire. And then they look at Showgirls and they're like, this is bad. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. I'm sorry that Robocop isn't in this one, but this also, this one is, not? A, is a I clear- I, I legitimately thought he was. Yeah, his nipples are out. Um, mm. Robo and nipples. Made of titanium alloy. Allo yeah, they shoot little darts. Yeah. Alloreolas? I like that, yeah, actually. Thank yeah, thank you. Uh, I think it's a great movie. I'm actually reading a book right now called It Doesn't Suck, which is like essays on showgirls, which is really enjoyable. Oh, that's a good title for the book. Yeah. You know, it's a line from the movie that is repeated. It oh, doesn't suck. Okay. Um, I, it's great. I love every second of it. Like, it's so the excess of it and the satire of like d sexualization in the entertainment industry. And quote, there's always someone younger and hungrier coming down the stairs after you. These are things that fucking the substance is trying to do that they end up saying literally nothing about other than like reinforcing the misogynist gaze that it seems to be intending to critique. Uh, I the the showgirls fucking rules. I will die defending showgirls. Um, I think you're in good company. A lot of people love this movie. I know. Yeah, I'm glad that it's been given another life. It truly is one of the posters of all time, though. Who else is in it? It's Elizabeth Berkeley, right? Mm -hmm. Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Who else? Uh, uh, fuck. Um, Danny DeVito. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, As Frank Showgirl. There are not that many other like big record. I'm sure you would recognize some of the names, but mm -hmm. um, just a bunch of folks. A bunch of folks, huh? Yeah, yeah it, it, it. it's it's uh, it's fantastic. It's I, and I think that Elizabeth Berkeley is so great in it. She's giving such a like sincere over the top performance uh i'm sure mm -hmm. you know about the infamous pool sex scene i do kyle mclaughlin playing like a condescending fuckboy asshole with floppy you know like toby mcguire spider-man 2 hair is pretty great honestly i don't know any of these other names i, I thought right? i would look at this and think oh this is just like a somewhat generational thing mm. nope i've never heard of any of these other people yeah 
Um, I could go off about Showgirls forever, but I won't because now we have to watch it for the Patreon. Yes. Uh, I can only, my mom will only let me see uh, PG-13 and below. That Was that okay? Sure. Okay, great. We can watch the, the uh, PG-13 cut that's about 10 minutes. <laughs> we can do the thing that I used to do with Audrey and NSP songs where I would loudly sing non-swear words over the swear words. Oh, that's smart. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's, uh, I remember I was at a summer, like, smart kid camp that they did it mm. i want to say like duke university where you stay for a week and you can pick a course that you're doing and mine was like mm-hmm. forensics forensic science of course very on brand yes yes and they would do like little social activities and there was one one night that we were like in an auditorium and th- this is going to give you a real uh time and place kind of moment they played the soldier boy and there was somebody frantically on the stage like every- from the boys Yes. Yeah. Uh, for every <laughs> soldier boy that ho, they would cut it and be like, scholar! <laughs> like the entire time, just some poor fucking intern having to yell scholar over that song. And it's like, replacing that one word does not make the song better. <laughs> That's maybe worse. That's very funny. That's actually worse. <laughs> when you said the forensics thing, what, what I should have said was, girl, you must be the Americana because you are on brand. Oh, Brian, that is so good. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's entering the vocabulary. You know what? I was at the Americana the other day. I know you were. Do you want to tell this? Do you want to tell this? I, I thought this was a cute story. What? Uh, the, the, the text we exchanged? Oh, my God. About a third party? Oh, she's going to listen to this. She listens to this. She has to listen to this because she writes down all the recommendations. <laughs> You, you can tell the story if you want. I um, thought this was fun. Yeah, so Aaron and I got dinner at the Revolving Sushi at the Galleria, and then we went to the Americana to see the substance, and we were coming out of the substance, and we ran into a, a girl who Aaron and her, you know, acknowledged each other, and they talked about, like, what movies we were seeing, and I was like, oh, hi, what's up? And then we walked away, and um, then Aaron was like, wow, a wild Chloe sighting. And I was like, fuck, (laughs) that was Chloe, (laughs) Um, which is especially funny because earlier when Aaron came to pick me up, we were talking about he was telling me about like a new Siri thing where, you know, you can ask Siri, like, who's that person that I just talked to? Like, and and Siri will tell you. And I was like, that's dumb. Who would ever need that? Oh, so it really came back around on me immediately. And I felt terrible. Yes, um, Chloe does listen to the show and writes down and keeps track of our what's poppins, etc. Um I've met multiple person, times in person. Yes, and uh well actually I think in person only once. Was it when my ankle was broken? Uh no. It, well actually where it was at yes, it was at my place when Twerp yeah. was here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, yes, I've met her so in I person think, one time and then been on a call with her once, question mark. Well you've been yes, that's right. Uh and so We were talking about, well, you texted me, oh my God, I ran into Chloe last night and I feel terrible because I acted like I didn't know who she was. And I said, well, do you want me to apologize to her on your behalf? And you said, yes. So uh, I texted her, Leighton feels bad about this. And Chloe texts back, that's so funny because I was about to ask this girl with Aaron how her foot was, but I wasn't sure it was Leighton. So karma, baby. Yeah, that's it. Very. I thought that was a lovely little like kind of synchronicity you know you both yeah. were unsure of who the other person was yes yeah a beautiful moment really and me walking yeah. out of that movie with my little kids meal that i got hey adults oh you got the snack pack yeah it's five dollars baby with, it's with the, the welch's fruit fruit snacks and the popcorn it's, yep. it's, and they it's get you get, you get a fountain drink i didn't realize yes, i do. was i was waiting for a bottled water because that's what the menu said and i think you know you the lady hooked drink. me up because I went up no, there we, like, am I allowed lot. to get the kids meal? And she was like, yeah, yeah, it happens more than you think. <laughs> yeah, it's a good deal. And it's like a good amount of food. It's not a stupid amount of popcorn. Yeah, it's, it's like all a I box want. full of popcorn. 
I mm -hmm. there, and there are other places that will still do candy instead of fruit snacks, and that's the ultimate deal. I get a little bit of popcorn. Oh, that's nice. I get a little bit yeah. of cherry vanilla Coke from the Freestyle Machine. Mm -hmm. Living mm -hmm. large. What's what? Are there any movie foods you would never eat in a movie? Like, what is an unacceptable food to be eating? Now, not at a fucking Alamo or something where they're serving you know meals. Yeah, and that stuff. was going to be my but first question. At a question. standard garden variety sit you know order at the counter and then bring it to the theater i'm not is getting wings i'm not getting pretzels oh, wings pretzel They're always i think is okay menu. pretzel yeah pretzel okay. is valid soft pretzel is fine if i'm in a movie i want popcorn and or candy i don't want anything goopy and i don't want to hear people eating it i don't want a hot like, dog no i would not order a hot dog in a movie i know many people do but i would not the Alamo Draft House situation is like a, a psychic spiritual handshake with everyone in the room. You are so consumed with the noises that you're making that you just kind of like filter it out as yeah. you gently crunch on whatever. Well, uh, I have to do my thing at the Alamo where I feel I never order food as we've talked about in the movie. So I make my own little slurpy chompy noises so that I fit in with so everybody else. Where I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, so good. Oh, you got to throw in like a so good or oh, numb. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got, you got it. Well, I think you got to do that to enhance a, to put everybody at ease because mm -hmm. everybody's making those noises. And also it enhances the science has shown this. It enhances the enjoyment of the film, right? Because it's like people can hear me and think that guy's having a good time. So they're going to have a better time. Yeah. It's like how we were in the very, very back row for the substance. And there was a row of teenage girls directly in front of us, which is the ideal people Ugh. that you want right nice. in front of you for yeah. a, a gross movie. Uh, and watching Did them they... like squealing and like covering their eyes was it enhanced my enjoyment of the movie very much. Were they laughing at the funny parts? Yeah. Once it starts Have committing I... to being funny, but then again raises the question of what element of this is the filmmaker inviting us to laugh at? Does the thing that you're inviting us to laugh at undermine the supposed message of the movie? Hmm. Discussion questions. Tell me about a notable audience interaction or thing that has happened to you during a movie because I, I have a couple uh Ooh. stories of my own um i'll say up front i do not talk during a movie the, there's a sinking no, feeling no. of dread where Turn like you see, phone, a, stop you, talking. you see a movie with somebody that you haven't seen a movie with and they want to lean over and whisper to oh. you it's like i'm gonna kill you I, our, our relationship yep. has changed um one million percent couldn't agree more shut up like i don't care if we're best friends i don't care if i'm married to you stop talking and rachel doesn't do this but uh stop talking during the movie well and because yes. i keep a stupid little harriet the spy notebook at my purse all the, in my purse all the time i will I whip notice. out a little note um yeah i i had one for a while and it ran out of paper and i just had to get like a refill and so now i'm back on it's I wish I had my purse right next to me, but it's the kind with the pen in it and you pull out the pen and it flips yep, open. Yep, yep, yep. Uh -huh. So I will pass a note if need be. But Ooh, okay. I've uh, never done that. I, I think can't the, see well enough. The all time best theater experience I've ever had, and this isn't a specific audience reaction, but I got to see Get Out on opening weekend in Brooklyn. Oh, fun. With That's like nice. people standing in on the sides to see it. And it was the best mm. crowd I've ever had. It was amazing. That's cool. Um, in terms of other specific experiences, I feel like I just don't remember them. Maybe the one other one is the, the moment where shit gets real and hereditary. It, it was the quietest I've ever heard a theater be. Uh -huh. That's but funny. What about you? You say you have a few specific ones. Yeah. Well, the 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 funniest one uh, to me is I went to see Bad Santa wow. in the theaters. Uh, I believe I was home visiting my folks from what year did that come out? That was probably late 90s, early or, 2000s. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like 99 ish. Maybe. I would, 99 would make sense. 2003. Okay. So uh, I was home from grad school then. Uh, and it was Christmas and I was, went to see a movie by myself and it was Bad Santa. Uh, and I got there slightly late, sit down, watching the movie and the scene happens where uh lauren lauren uh, lauren or heather lauren graham uh is having sex with billy bob thornton in the car and is saying fuck me santa fuck me santa fuck me santa that scene happens and then 
about five rows ahead of me, an entire family gets up and leaves the theater. <laughs> and I was like, oh, guys, did you, it's rated R. Like, you oh. didn't. You didn't. Anyway, that has stuck with me because I'm like, that's that's some poor parenting in action. That's uh, that's the real life version of the Always Sunny Christmas special where Charlie's running around yelling, did you mm-hmm. fuck my fucking mom? Yeah. Uh, All timer. Th- the best theater experience I've ever had was when the and I, I can't remember if I've told this story on the show before. Uh, it was when the first Star Wars special editions were coming out in the theaters. So this is in the mid 90s you know, roughly 20 years after Star Wars. And it's the first time that they went back and they added like CGI and blah, blah, blah. They added added the little uh, Job of the Hut band and got rid of Max exactly. Fuck, what's the name of it? Max Rebo, yes. Max Max Rebo, Rebo. okay. Yes. Um, So uh, it was like, it was winter. I was in college. So the we had to drive in a not quite a snowstorm, but in some bad winter weather to the movie theater, which is like half an hour away. There's a huge line. People are in costume. The theater is packed. We all get there early. It's me and a bunch of other nerd friends. You know, we haven't seen that. We are exactly the right age to have grown up with Star Wars, but never to have seen it in a theater. I'm old enough where I saw uh, Empire and Jedi in a theater, but not Star Wars. Okay. Uh, and uh, so it's a special editions. Everybody's excited. And we're all sitting there waiting for, you know, the movie to start and teasers and stuff. And in this front of this packed theater, this guy, like, I would say walks, but basically bursts into the front of the room. And he, he gets up in front of everybody. He's not a theater employee. He's just a, a person, just a fan of Star Wars. And he stands up in front of the theater and he's kind of, you know, he's quivering with excitement. And everyone's like, what the fuck is about to happen with this guy? And he stands there for like a couple minutes and he's just kind of looking around and he goes, left half star, right half wars, star wars, star wars, star wars, star wars. And you go faster and faster. Eventually he just starts screaming and then he runs out of the theater and everybody bursts into applause wow it was awesome the star wars hype man yes and everybody was like yeah you know it was ever you know this That's is so sweet. it's before the prequels it's before the the, the realization that had set in that lucas was going to completely fuck everything uh with the old yeah. movies it was just pure excitement you know, the the thing you loved as a kid is back. And uh, it was great. It was like maybe the best fandom moment. And also, fandoms were not, you know, it's not this toxic yeah, thing in the same yeah. way it is now. Just pure, beautiful fan energy. Uh, I will always remember that. Yeah. That's and it, so especially beautiful. occurring in a snowstorm in the middle of Massachusetts. Oh, so great. So that's great. that's wonderful. Also, yeah, I don't think you have the situation where a quivering man can run to the front of a theater and everyone's chill with it in this day and age either. Like, yes, that's no, that's not, right. not going to happen. I, think he, I believe I don't quite remember. I think he was in some sort of like Luke ish costume or something. I don't really remember. But yeah, it was clear, you know, clear that something was about to to yeah. happen. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you're not old enough to remember like nerd fan communities in the 80s and 90s but i sure am and it was a very different thing right it was a very it was smaller yeah Uh, i'm not going to say it was better or worse it was definitely a lot less it was a different beast it was a different thing yeah um you know it was definitely a lot more white dudes uh than it is now Um, well and i think also the novelty of finding other people who like the same weird shit that you do is that was a novelty instead now it's just sort of like, all right no now it's easy to find people who like the same weird shit you do yeah Back perhaps then, to a detrimental t- degree i agree you have to work for it uh no back then like if you found another you know nerd fuck that's cool that's rare unless you went to you know like a place where nerds gather but now it's easy did you ever see the will smith movie seven pounds no, I never did. Oh, it's bad. 
my mom took me to see that one i think i might have been like 10 or 11 and there's a remind me what the shtick is with that one he has to (sighs) like he owes someone in england seven pounds and he has to pay them back yeah um he, that was a he, joke for everybody he, listening to the show. Despite Layton's reaction, that was a joke I made. So you can, I know you're, you're probably laughing at, at home, but if not, you can, I, I give you permission to laugh at my little joke. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's like Will Smith is atoning for a thing that he yeah, did but what's by the, what helping. Is the, what's the seven pounds? It's like, uh, he, <laughs> he's donating his like, organs the the climactic mm-hmm. thing i do not care about spoiling this movie if anybody gets mad at me for no. this basically he ends up killing himself to give his like or seven pounds or whatever of his organs to mm-hmm. to people but he kills himself by getting in the bathtub and putting his pet box jellyfish in there what I, even at like 10 or 11, I thought that was the dumbest shit ever and I would not shut up about it. But there's a sex scene between him and Rosario Dawson. And and the jellyfish. Yeah, goes crazy. Uh, And when it happens, my mom, uh, to prevent me from seeing the sex, threw her purse in my face. uh, (laughs) So so I wouldn't see them having sex and like everything in her purse went everywhere after she hit me oh, it was in like the an face open the purse. purse yeah 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 uh, and it was like scrambling to pick stuff up and put it back in the purse so and that you would have did... been very little at the time or no 10 or 11 no 11 not that 11. little oh, no that's i can see a sex scene with rosario dawson and will smith it's fucking fine whatever i well you know it's interesting so we showed actually another movie experience that i love less because the audience is i went to see uh, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in the theater when it came out oh. and I couldn't tell you where it was it was somewhere in North Jersey or southern New York and it was just a big beautiful old theater you know balcony and like one of these gorgeous old like movie palace type things why we never went to this place again I don't know why we ended up there couldn't tell you anything except I remember seeing Last Crusade in this amazing movie theater but we showed uh, Audrey last crusade for the first time uh about two weeks ago and she hasn't seen any of the other indiana jones movies i think raiders is too violent and temple of doom, temple of is, doom too, is a lot yeah it's pretty iffy in a wide variety of uh ways mm-hmm. but we felt like last crusade would be a fun one but it's like she is at an age now it's like what sexually what are we okay with her seeing on right. screen and that's a hard question to answer yeah like and also know, it's like, like hmm, sex she... with nazis question mark well there was also that um but she's also at an age where if anyone kisses she's like ew gross. she will actually cover her it's the most kid thing Aww. she will cover her face oh, like if there's wonderful. any kind of kissing or anything on screen oh, which is wait till she very hears cute. what you did to kirby <laughs> oh. look kirby had a great time I'm not. I, I, I'm not going to take too much credit for it. There Did she like us. the movie? Uh, I noticed you're changing the subject. She did like the movie a lot. Okay, and, that's good. I think uh, she could handle Raiders. I there's I think so by that age. I had seen Poltergeist and Raiders, and I think you're getting to a point oh. where you're where you're going to have to traumatize her a little bit. So she's cooler when she's older. Well, speaking of that, Layton, actually, we thought it would be, you know, it would be a fun thing to show Audrey is the Wednesday series. Oh, okay. Right? Halloween-y, little baby gothy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we went to see the Beetlejuice sequel with Jenna Ortega. You'll recognize her from that. We showed her that first episode and... She, after the show, she went in the bathroom and claimed she passed out because that's how upsetting it was. And it's, it's not that much well, that goes on about. in it. No, no, nothing that I could really, it's one of those things where I was like, there's a little like kind of cartoonish violence, but she watches Mission Impossible and there's no problem with that. I don't know what exactly it so was maybe about like that show. maybe like a tonal thing? Maybe, but it was like we. I was shocked because I am very. She watches usually... you play like Elton Ring and shit, right? Yeah, uh, I don't know what That's it was. Scarier. She just it just hit her weird, and she was like very upset about it. 
Aww. So, and, and it was like neither Rachel nor I were, like, we were like, oh my God, like, what? Okay, maybe really? she couldn't Crazy. handle Raiders. <laughs> this is where I'm going with this. Uh, yeah. I, th- I think if you just had her do what the characters are doing, where they look away at a certain moment, um, that's that's about the, the worst of it. That's what we kind of did with, um, we did that with a lot of things, actually. I did that in Last Crusade when uh, he drinks from the wrong cup and gets yeah, old yeah, and crazy yeah, yeah. which definitely scared me as a kid oh, yeah, uh too. but uh you know we were like look away for this part and she did and it was fine um but yeah with the guy's face melting in raiders would she be able to handle that i don't think so no uh, that's probably I mean, the worst part right yeah i mean my number one fucked me up so bad was the face peeling off in poltergeist which of course as a well-adjusted yes. adult now is my favorite thing ever it's um, the greatest yes it's amazing. It's a, the you know, meat I, crawling across the counter. Like, fuck yeah. I cannot handle movie gore. I love every single thing in Poltergeist and we'll watch it all the time. It's great. Okay. Halloween episode idea. We watch Poltergeist with Jory and do a commentary. Sure. I have I not seen definitely. that movie in a very, very long time. Should we watch all three Poltergeists? <sighs> Well, I'd love to monopolize both of your times well, and just four? force my friends to hang out with me for that long. That would be nice. Are there four? Wait, there are only three poltergeists, right? Because the third one's the one in the apartment building. I've never seen the other ones. Yeah, the, the poltergeist two is the one with uh, Kane, a very good horror movie. You don't know Kane? He's an amazing horror movie bad guy. That's not a good film, but oh, I, I can't see him. The, the actor who plays Kane is incredible. It's like the definition of the Hat Man. He's really yes. the Hat Man. He's really great. Wait, this looks sick. Okay, speaking of the Hat Man, this is returning to one of our earliest episodes, but every once in a while, I go on the subreddit for people who are addicted to Benadryl. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, because if you do enough Benadryl, you trip. But the thing is that nobody, it's not like LSD or shrooms when people are like, yeah, you know, it was an amazing experience. It really helped me out. Like I communed with beautiful things Mm -hmm. and it made me realize things about myself. Invariably, the the DPH, which is the shortened version of the full, you know, chemical name for Benadryl. Okay. It's horrible. It's as we say in one of the single digit episodes of this show, everything is made of spiders and the hat man is coming for you. Um, but people like they keep doing it like, well, it won't be as bad as last time. And then they do it again. And it's as bad as last time. And there are some horrifying like trip simulators on YouTube where people like recreate what they saw. And it's like, oh, my God. Yeah, Horrors no, beyond you. our comprehension, all because of a little Benadryl. I have never, ever taken something where I have hallucinated or, I know. you know, I, I've been so, I, I remember as a kid having a fever bad enough where I started like kind of hallucinating. Um, but Whoa. I mean, yeah, it, it was just one particularly bad fever. Um, and uh, the hallucinations I remember <laughs> were Space Quest themed because <laughs> i was obsessed with the game space quest and i remember Aww. thinking that i was you know watching space quest happen in real life feverish uh, in bed trying to point and click on your environment i mean not not yes actually you can't combine uh, those two objects but i have never i don't do you know uh drugs really except on this show and mm-hmm. uh but i've never i've never had hallucinations or trips or anything like that yeah it's uh kids don't don't do large amounts of benadryl just just say no to the nope. hat man <laughs> what would we call the community of people who do a lot of benadryl i, I was thinking drill sergeants perfect no notes because i think if you went with the benny half you know benzos are already a thing well exactly yeah or is it benny safties maybe i don't know mm, on but brand. yeah ben, ben, bennies are a thing uh already right yeah kids stay away from drugs they're not good for you that's the most pat thing i've ever said but they're correct yep i agree with that now when when we got online here to record this you were you had some vague ideas about talking about halloween things which we've kind of started to do we've sort of started but, to do, yes uh let's talk candy let us let us let's uh hit me with the worst the worst yeah candy. so in the situation in which you're trick-or-treating with your friends and then you get home to recount your your spoils and then tr- do tradesies for the shit that you don't like for the stuff that your mm-hmm. friends have that's good mm-hmm. um 
I don't like Whoppers. Almond Joy. Thank you. I totally agree. Yep. Whoppers are, are, are dog shit. I say, well, then what's this, Layton? What's that on your desk? Oh. Uh, I, I may or may not have a large bag of Halloween candy around that it's just like, well, I have no friends to trade this with, so I'm just going to I'm gonna eat them. Mm. Uh, mounds. mounds. Bullshit. We, Almond Joy oh and Mounds. God. We said it at the same time. Yes. Mounds Show, show me one person who likes that shit. It's disgusting. Do you remember the old Mounds, uh, Mounds Almond Joy commercials? Uh, Sometimes you feel like a nut. Yes, yeah, so with like palm yeah. trees. Sometimes and you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts. Mounds don't. Why they were marketed together, I'm not quite sure. But yeah. yeah. What are also terrible? Um, unlike, I feel like the popular one that gets brought up mm. a lot are the suspicious looking like taffies in the the either orange uh -huh. or black wrappers. I love those. Uh, uh, Necco wafers. Necco wafers, bad. very bad. I don't think I ever Why got them trick or treating those? though. I had no. a friend in elementary school who like would eat Necco wafers all the time. If oh. that's any indication of what that person was like. Uh, a true bottom tier candy is wax lips. Yes, Which barely a candy. Barely a candy. You can get this. Um, Galco's in like Eagle Rock Highland Park has all these crazy classic candies. You can get those there. Uh, candy cigarettes, which I absolutely did get trick or treating. Oh, uh, same. There's something satisfying about the, like I often think about the way that you eat them, which is just like like a little cartoon yep. beaver. Uh, yep. Those not good. Um, mm -hmm. let's see. I don't dots. like dots. I hate dots. Dots are if you're bad. Gonna eat, like a fucking gumdrop, eat a gumdrop, which are yeah. also bad. I think I, I guess I would get those sometimes. Um, what are they, what's the other shit tier one? But if I want a chewy fruit candy, I'm going to do gummy bears. I'm not going to do a fucking dot. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know what I hate now and laters. Are those like good and plenties? Is that the same type of thing? No, there's sort of like a high chew, but bad. Uh, mm. I don't know why it's called a now and later, because it sucks now and it's going to suck later. <laughs> well, there, I think you answered your own question. Um, I do love cowtails. Very exciting to get a cowtail. I don't know what that is. You don't? Okay, do you know the little like circular wrapped candies where it's like caramel and then white, like a dot of white cream in the center? A dot of white what? <sighs> for the love of God, Brian. A dot uh, of white. I, I, sorry, the internet just cut out for a second there. Can you just say the word you said after cream? white? Cream. Thank you. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? But what no, I don't know what you you're said? talking about. I said that wasn't so hard, comma, was it? Okay. Question um, mark. And I'm not going to badger you about that because I heard you loud and clear. The a cow tail is well, I like... I hear that from my wife all the time. So there's like... The, the the short little taffy version of it a cow tail is like if you stretched it out it's like a stick it's oh. like chewy caramelly outside and then like a vanilla center oh that sounds good they're delicious I love them um, anytime I, I see them at a gas station I get one I love in that vein sugar daddies like full size yeah. sugar daddies fucking great sugar babies are great too mm -hmm. and the little version um I, for one, love candy corn and candy corn Same. pumpkins. Let's uh, go. I've been eating. I, I will be, by the end of this month, done with an entire bag of candy corn pumpkins. I best. fucking love them. They have to get They're a little stale first. That's yep. important. Mm -hmm. um, I also would you never really... really good, actually? What? Take a sip of coffee and then stick a candy corn pumpkin in there. Ooh. And it's really nice. Yep. Because I don't spice. put... I drink coffee black. I don't put you know milk or sugar in my coffee but a little candy corn pumpkin right after a sip of coffee very nice that sounds really good you know what i hate mm. a plain mini hershey's yeah because it's bad chocolate why would you want it plain a mr good bar fine a nestle crunch also fine yeah, a mini I hershey's a nestle crunch. no what's the point crackle also fine uh i don't like skittles every once no, in a same. while i like the tropical skittles but i don't like um base game skittles Nope, I agree. Uh, I hate the little Twizzlers in the individual pack. I mm -hmm. got to be in the right mood for a Twizzler. Um, I got to say, your judgment right so far is 100% on point. Uh, what, what were you most excited to get? 
Definitely. I mean, sugar daddies, full size sugar daddies. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, beyond that, any like the the small square uh, Snickers Milky Way. Those are fantastic. Reese's yeah. anything, especially if it's like a bigger one, like a fucking pumpkin or yeah, you know, yeah. like around Easter, you get like the little eggs. Those oh, are great. Yeah. Full size, a single Reese's cup. That's really good these yeah. days. And I know you're on this uh, this bandwagon. Take five is fantastic. They're so good. Uh, you gotta love a take five. They're they're um, I th- they, I think a take five is like the perfect candy. I totally agree with you uh, i don't Twix, think i ever great. really got them as a kid when i was trick-or-treating though i don't know if they did the mini ones no, but i think I, they, in that please. vein the closest thing is i was always most excited to get 100 grand um oh yeah yeah, yeah. i don't know those very well uh take five was not a thing when i was a kid we had whatchamacallits which were vaguely similar what's in a whatchamacallit uh, i can't it, it's a bunch of stuff like a take five but it's less gotcha. I think it's more spread out. I don't quite remember. Yeah, a hundred uh-huh. grand is like caramel center with um, crunch bar outside. Great Heath bar, awesome. Ah, uh, love a Heath bar. Heath bars are so underrated. The snap, the my teeth 100%. hurt. Excellent. You know what's great? Any Freezing kind of any them. like classic? Yes, that's what I was going to say. Any classic candy bar, a Snickers, a Heath, or whatever. Freeze that shit. We used to they used to do this thing in summer camp. They would have the camp store and you could redeem, you'd buy some tickets and you'd redeem the tickets for what have you. You could do frozen candy bars and what they would do, they had, so it was at a window and the wind, like to open the window, they would like pull up the board. So the board was like tilted down over the top of the window. And if you bought a frozen Snickers, they would smack it up on the top and smack it down on the bottom to oh. shatter it a bit. And then you'd chomp that frozen Snickers and it was fucking awesome. That's like having, they knew what was going on. That's maybe the most excited I've ever heard you. <laughs> I because it's summer camp. You know the the luxuries in summer camp are especially appreciated because you don't get them that much. Yeah. And to have a frozen candy bar, and I'm not much of a candy bar guy, typically speaking. I can't even tell you the last time I purchased a full size candy bar. I just thought, let's eat a candy bar. There's something um, about I'll gnawing eat- on it. It's when it's frozen and you're just like, oh, it's so great. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, well, uh, my dad and I, yeah. there's a great arcade in Wilmington called Jungle Rapids where we would go and play pinball and other games. But the real thing was that, you know, the last time I was in Wilmington, they still had it and we played it. But it's like a little a candy grab machine that we were both really good at. And we would mm-hmm. just take turns and get like a freezer bag full of the little tight it was you know it was kit kats milky ways three musketeers like all of the good shit and the claw was very generous so we would just shove that bag into the freezer Hmm. and you got snackies all the time Uh, it's the greatest now i just learned this i feel like a lot of people would know this Uh, do you know why a three musketeers is called a three musketeers this is not a joke i'm not doing one of those uh, is it because of this this the swirl and the chocolate they used to come in packs of three with three different flavors what were the three different flavors? I believe chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, but double check my facts on this. I The way that I enjoyed eating uh, Three Musketeers the most as a kid was biting each bit of chocolate off of it and then Slurping that down nougat. that noog. Yeah, yeah, get that noog. Crack open the noog. Oh, strawberry mm-hmm. Three Musketeers looks great. Oh, the mint ones. That is such a... Mint. Was it chocolate, nostalgic. mint, and strawberry? Uh, maybe? Or... Classic I'm not I'm not seeing strawberry. like the original ones. Uh yeah. strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. I was right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Three Musketeers cool. is good. Uh, I don't like the consistency of Three Musketeers, actually. It, it, that's it's that's the very appeal for me. me. It's like I do you like Charleston chews? Not so much. That makes sense. I love the mini Charleston chews are so good. I don't like the big mm-hmm. ones, but the mini ones, it's like the perfect chocolate to that texture that you hate ratio yes there were we used to get off-brand not off-brand but weird ones goldberg's peanut chews were a classic <laughs> like what up. the fuck is going on with this candy mm-hmm. uh that yeah um there's actually a really good one rachel's dad used to love this candy called walnettos and they're really good and i've only ever seen them available like in bulk in like candy stores in like a barrel at a candy store yes, hu- yeah 100 percent. that's what it is yes that that wrapper is very iconic yeah they're very very good um 
How do you think that yeah. the first person who made a candy store and put all of the little individual wrapped ones in barrels felt? I guess now that I'm thinking about it, it was like that was what was available at the time that you put it in yes. barrels. That's but, right. You'd go you'd get a peppermint stick at the drugstore, right? Yeah, yeah. From your from your soda jerk. From your soda jerk and you get a little egg cream. I okay. What was the a little frequency? Egg, what? Wait, sorry, you cut out for a second. A little egg. Ryan, what? I don't want to do this bit. I don't like. This I don't. Bit. I. I. Layton, I need it for I'm editing. I'm safe wording show. this bit. Sincerely, I'm safe wording this bit. What does that mean? What's your is your safe word cream? And if so, can you say your safe word? Brian. Mm-hmm. No. Okay, I'm doing you're, it for. You're, I'm doing you're gonna. It, you're gonna make me genuinely show. mad at you, Brian. You're getting there. Yeah, yeah, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I know. Um, yeah, I. How how is the ratio? I'm looking at. Okay, sorry. I pulled up a picture of somebody of Halloween candy haul, so I could look at it and you know reflect haul? upon what? the different candies. Halloween candy. What is that? I don't know what you mean. A haul of ween. You know the band. Mm -hmm. October is their month. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I never I thought so. about that. They must have like done a the hall of a, a tour right yeah i don't know are you but, are you a ween person i like ween i don't think i could name a, a ween song oh there's a lot of good ones i'll have to uh, ween myself your party off your party is the one that uh i think you might especially enjoy but they that is a band that does a billion different styles and many of them very well okay so uh, what I was going to get to is I'm looking at this haul and it, you know, it's the the regular suspects and then a bag oh, of Doritos. I just understood like H-A-U-L is what you meant. I thought you were yeah. talking about like an H-A-L-L, -L, like oh, a no. haul a of hall candy. Of I, 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 oh, got it. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Now I understand. Um, but yeah, there's nacho cheese Doritos in here. That's a swerve. No. Nope, 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 nope. Also, was briefly, people who give yeah, out please. the like pre-toothpasted the pre-pasted brushes nope. fuck you fuck you kid yeah, let let kids be kids come on just give what me give here? me a razor in a candy like god intended you yeah, sanctimonious I, like, fuck if i want my kid to brush their teeth which i do uh i i'll do it at home you know i'm, I'm not what yeah. what parent in the middle of trick-or-treating is going to be like and now it's time to brush your teeth Fuck Do you get you. joy of the disappointment on every child's face when they realize that's what you're giving them? Like, do you like, mm -hmm. or do you enjoy that? Uh, no, I, I don't like disappointing children. I disappoint children with my music, not my Halloween candy. Oh, uh, Tootsie Rolls. Always excited for Tootsie Rolls. However, pretty good. Pretty most good. exciting are the little flavored ones, most specifically the blue vanilla one. Oh, I don't know that one. That sounds very, very good. It's the best form of Tootsie Roll. Just like imagine mm. Tootsie Roll, but vanilla. Um, mm -hmm. And I've never seen one bigger than the teeny little size that like lemon and whatever the other little flavors are. But blue, uh, bad blue... candy. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'll finish what you're saying. No, go ahead. Bazooka gum. Fuck you with your bazooka gum. Yeah. I don't like like that pink bubble gum type gum anyway. It hurts like the back of your. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It really as a child it gives you a preview of like this is how your body's gonna hurt later. Enjoy. I feel like with bazooka gum, it's like guys, it's not the '40s anymore. Yeah. We have better candy than this. Yeah, we've made innovations. Speaking of innovations in candy technology, as a child, I would be very excited to receive a Butterfinger. Oh yes, I like they butterfingers. They fell off. What did they change? I don't know. Did they really? They I never eat them anymore. I don't think this is a nostalgia thing, but something about them hmm. changed. The texture inside is completely different. You know what? You're right. They're too flaky now, right? They like fall apart too much, I think. It's <sighs> Ever since that Bart Simpson got involved, <laughs> that's when they went downhill. It's like it, the I don't think they're as crispity and crunchity they're like mealy now yeah that that's ki that's kind of what i mean yeah have you had the peanut butter snickers yeah the they're crunchy fine. peanut butter snickers i really like those they're good i think base game snickers doesn't quite I, hit but the peanut butter I, snickers are like one of my favorite things. i have a problem with the butterfinger ad campaign which is nobody nobody better lay a finger on my butter finger which feels to me like you're rhyming finger with finger and thus 
fails. It's a bit of a hat on a hat. Yeah. Finger also, it makes finger. me want to say something like, nobody better nobody better lay a finger on my butthole flinger. <laughs> but that doesn't Was really that make sense. Was that an NSP tweet that you've made in the past? Probably. I'm, I'm looking at this hall of candy and see, even seeing the box for the dots is pissing me off. Like, <laughs> what a waste of space. Oh, you know what's a good candy? Rolo. Rolo oh. is a good candy. I love Rolos. They're up there. Yeah, my absolute favorites. And when you mm -hmm. make the little Christmas time snack of you have your little pretzels and you put a Rolo on top mm -hmm. and you melt it. And... Yeah, I know. Rolos are a good candy. They've been around for a yeah. long time. They, I remember used, uh, when I was a kid, they used to be pretty I don't, rare, I guess. I don't know. I feel like I didn't see them that much. It was like a, mm -hmm. a, a weird, unusual thing to see a Rolo. And now they're everywhere. But I still don't see them that much. I, I eat Rolos pretty regularly. They're mm -hmm. they're a tasty treat. The gold foil is satisfying. Um, have you had resin? They, I've no. never seen it in anything other than what? like a little bag. It's I don't they're, even know what that is. They're like hardcore Rolos. They're way what? chewier. And it's spelled like rosin, R E S I N. Yeah, sort of. It's like R E I S C uh, question mark. Sweet. Oh, R I E S E N. Yeah. R I E S. Oh, I see. Like reason. Is yeah. How I would say that. But it's pronounced rosin. I don't know. I played viola. Okay. So, of course, in my mind, I was like, oh, right. this is rosin. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I want to talk more about your viola experience because we mentioned this a few weeks ago. And I'm very intrigued by your. What was your life like as a violer? Um, I hated it. it I didn't <laughs> like it. I loved. Uh -huh classical music my ipod nano was almost entirely classical music and then queen albums i bought at yard sales that i burned onto my ipod hmm. um and so i was like a big classical head and so i was always severely disappointed by the stuff that we ended up playing in class uh mm -hmm. and also i was but, bad at it and you had to learn to read c clef yeah. which is interesting yeah yeah i think that was maybe part of my frustration because it was like man if i had just done violin this would have been a more universally uh, applicable yeah. thing but like you know you watch the violin sections get all the fun shit and you're just there like this sucks i don't get to do anything cool like it's <sighs> you know it is really true that especially as a kid there's this implicit hierarchy in which instrument you play based on what fun shit it gets to do in orchestra yeah. and in concert band like if you're you know second tenor saxophone you're not happy you don't get to play anything that interesting typically speaking yeah um yeah i it's it it, it, it is a form of uh punishment to be relegated to those other parts yeah and i allowed myself to be talked into it by a lady who was mean to me all the time mm -hmm. like a schmuck <laughs> but yeah we had like two violin sections because everyone played the violin we had like maybe five cellists or something like i we traveled to do the, the comp orchestra competitions and stuff like i was mm -hmm. you know we did shows and recitals or whatever like i was in it in it um it was not good it was, middle school was also an incredibly dark period in my life so yeah. having the uh that on top of it you know it's just a little extra like i think about rosining a bow and i'm like Ugh. yeah Yikes. were there any pieces you particularly liked that you remember that we got to play <sighs> or, or whatever or just that you hurt um that's a good question i had so much like i used to have a really good ability to like listen to a piece and be like oh it's this by this person in this movement but i've kind mm -hmm. of that knowledge has trickled out of my brain i like shostakovich a lot uh shostakovich yep very cool tchaikovsky up there uh mozart lacrimosa that whole deal mm -hmm. i just love sad sounding stuff shocking mm -hmm. for me right yeah. um but yeah and i i don't there was so little stuff online too of like here's the viola part for a thing so it wasn't like i could look something up and be like yippee i'm playing a song that i like on my viola <laughs> right uh yeah so that was my viola experience mm -hmm. i wish i kind of wish that i had done violin and then stuck with it longer but 
you know, my pivot, the reason that I quit orchestra is because I got on the school news show and that oh, right. elected yes, we've re about replaced this. the orchestra slot. And I think even though it didn't feel that way at the time, it was priming me in a certain way for, you know, future podcasting endeavors, future podcasting endeavors. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Somebody made rosin brownies. Oh, those look so fucking good. Not the bow rosin the not the bow candy rosin i do yeah the candy rosin that just looks completely delicious um a thing that from playing an orchestra now it always really bothers me in movies or commercials or tv when you see somebody playing violin or viola and it's like that poor form bad mm -hmm, not good mm -hmm. like what is your the 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 like uh you know the 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 way that you have to hold it like you mm -hmm. see somebody holding the bow wrong like this like gripping. It's like yeah, yeah false bad yep. not actually doing it yeah and also like no, the, I, you know you got to hold your keep that wrist straight was the thing that i always had a problem with mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've been debating i feel like i want to i want to learn guitar and part of me is like I'm never going to be great, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm I'm not a guitarer. But if I could do some basic guitar shit, it would actually help me a lot. I'm sure, yeah. So, I bet I wonder if I took 10 minutes a day and just like started practicing guitar. I think in a year I could be I could do some basic shit, maybe sooner. I think you but could. But here, here's a, do you, here's do you the, have a guitar? The, I have an acoustic, at least one acoustic. Do you uh, want an there. electric guitar? Do you want to borrow my electric guitar that I don't use? I may, I might, I might just get one too, though. I don't know that I see now I get stuck with the like, what's, I don't want to get a good, like a capital G good one, obviously, yeah. because why would I? But if um, you want to test out mine, which is pretty okay that I never touch. Uh, next yeah, time I, I, see I feel you, like, I, I feel like an electric might be the, the way to do it. Um, I if just want to borrow like, some pedals. I have a ton of pedals that I don't use. Mm -hmm. I might. But so here's the question. If you were me, would you like part of me is like, oh, I should take lessons. But then I'm like, no, that's fucking stupid. It's a waste of money for I'm a decent musician. For can... everyone that you know, that we both know. And also like Meowch gave me a couple of little bass lessons. Um, yeah. And also with your existing knowledge of music, I think you genuinely don't need that. And do I care? Like, am I going to fuck up the technique? You know, like that, that's my fear is I'm going to have a bad form and then like lock it in and then have, you know, need to do something and be like, uh Oh, I really, you know, I think I, doing, I che myself. doing check-ins with our friends who play. And like, even if you just take a little video of yourself playing and be like, Hey, what am I doing anything wrong here? Like yeah. I, I say, why not? Yeah, Phobos would know. Phobos would definitely know. Yeah. I will. However, push for you can always get a bass it's only got four strings i do i feel like if i can get guitar down that it, i'll use guitar more in what i do than i will that's true probably. but bass is bass. more fun bass is more fun and you get um, to you get to find out what your bass face is because oh it, i know it, my bass face yeah <laughs> that's my bass face okay very good because uh, i'm like it's so low. <laughs> I, lo I always love when somebody looks really distressed in their bass face. Like they're they're tearing it up and they're just like, I haven't played bass in a long time. I, I should. <laughs> I miss it. It's nice. I was learning a bunch of Radiohead bass lines, which are more complex than you would think they'd be. Mm -hmm. uh, very fun though. Oh yeah, no, I, th I would think they would be very, yeah. very complex. Uh, Ray, I like, I like, uh, sitting down and trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in Radiohead songs. It's great. You can listen to a different part every time and you're like, whoa. Oh, Isn't there a shit. new Tom York album or something? Um, there's The Smile, which is sort of the successor. Maybe that's what there's, I'm I have of. not listened to the new Smile album. Thom no. York. Thom Yorkie. Oh, yeah. There you go. Thom How old is Thom Yorkie, would you guess? <laughs> uh, I would say 62? Question mark? 56. 56 damn okay yeah wow uh height five five short king he mm -hmm. recently like shaved all of his hair off like he's had the cool shoulder length for a long time um mm -hmm. 
now he looks very different. Uh, should we move on to some segments about now? We should move on to this on to some segments. I agree. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, well, this is a special day, actually, because I want to do something a little different uh, today. So n- there comes a time, uh, usually on this show, when we get to really kind of, uh, in some sense, delve into our individual and collective, uh, please don't scroll the internet while I'm talking, uh, individual and collective, please don't flip me off while I'm talking, uh, individual and collective psyches. I asked you not to do that. Uh, I'm not doing anything. Uh huh. For, okay. For all of you Patreon <laughs> supporters, check the video for this because if you're just listening to the audio, when Layton said, I'm not doing anything, I think you're going to be fucking shocked when you see what she's actually doing because it is quite far from not doing anything. I can assure you that what I'm witnessing right now is one of the most aggressive acts uh, I've ever seen committed to video, especially by someone who purports to be, quote, not doing anything. I'm not so, doing anything, uh, and I'm not gaslighting you either. I would never do that. Roll the tape. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> roll the tape. Let's play that back uh-huh. on video. And uh, I think those of you who trust Layton, well, you're going to have to reckon with the truth. Uh, you know, as they say, facts don't care about your feelings. And uh, what we're seeing here now, that, that, this, is, <laughs> this is next level actually there's nothing let's just say that the, nothing the has not, changed the, the not doing anything went from a, a more passive version of it to a slightly <laughs> uh wagglier version of i not don't doing, i don't know what you're talking about not doing Brian. anything no i know I continue know with don't. what you were saying i would never want to interrupt it's you or just, cause any sort of distraction to what you're talking about i i, I appreciate that but i'm going to say again the evidence runs contrary to to your words. This is this a problem that you've case. invented. If you can't focus, that's on you. Oh, I can focus. I'm the most focused one here. I am, I'm focused. I'm laser focused on uh, introducing on the show segments. Right now. It, well, introducing one segment in particular. I wouldn't say I'm introducing both segments because that would be. You know, that, that would be one of the segments typically when we introduce it, that's that's your job. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the other segment is typically my job, although maybe maybe we need to formalize that in in writing uh, who introduces it, it occurs to me that we kind of have a handshake deal with this podcast. So it might be good to just get it down uh, on on paper here. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, you know what? We should uh, we should sign. What would it's not a post nup because we're not nupped but (laughs) yeah you know uh, nupping uh, it up yeah oh i'm rachel and i've been nupping it up in fact our uh our our 17th uh nup anniversary is coming up this this weekend yeah so we're gonna be uh we're we're fully nupped um as as you can tell by our erect nupples there's the face there's the face I like. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, 17 years being married uh, this weekend. Yep. Um, anyway, as I was saying while I was focusing, this, this is an unusual week because uh, we're going to do something on this show we've never uh, done before. And uh, I've been planning this for, for a while, and I didn't want to... I don't want to do it until it was fully formed because it actually took a bit of logistical uh, planning. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It took a. It took. I had to send. Uh, I had to send some emails uh, and make sure oh, that while we everything. Were recording? Not while. See, I, unlike you, I don't send emails while we're recording. I typically I like to stay focused, as we've established mm, do we uh, know? on on the show here. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Eventually, you know, uh, let me just turn off that notification. Uh, <laughs> a, as they say, if you keep your finger like that, and by the way, I notice it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of falling down a little bit. Your hand's going to stick like that if you if you keep your finger in stick in like that what? position. Actually, I didn't realize at first I thought it was a ring, but now I realize it's a finger supporter that you put on there to give you a little extra a little extra strength. Right. Anyway, this week uh, we're going to do something we haven't done, uh, I'd say, in a while, but probably ever before. 
Let me just switch pens uh, on this show, which is uh, the first segment here is a uh, it is a pop culture recommendation segment. And this segment, unlike the other segment, is a segment where you, Layden, and I, Brian, get to talk about some stuff that we've been uh, enjoying recently. Now, I'm hoping that that finger stays up as long as this introduction <laughs> goes on, because uh, I, I'm going to say right now, if it if it doesn't, uh, you're not fully committed to the bit that. To you're, the what? you're doing here to the bit now you're the one who does but i don't I, I don't do bits that's right that being said i can recognize when a bit is being done right you know like once again i know. don't i'm afraid that i don't know what you're talking about well look i if anyone understands not knowing what someone else is talking about that's that's me because i i remain uh as usual fairly clueless when people bring up that word um but this segment, it's the, the first segment on, on the show, uh, and this is our pop culture recommendation segment. It's where you get to talk about a book, a movie, a video game, a finger position, or something else that you've been enjoying re recently. And the name of this segment, yes, sorry, you have, uh, do you have a comment? No. Okay, great. Uh, the name of the segment is What's Poppin' and the theme song which we insert in during the lengthy post-production process goes here. What's poppin'? What's poppin'? Layton, what's poppin'? What's poppin' for me is um, I love movies that make you feel really, really bad. So I watched the Swedish and Danish movie Aniara, which is about, it's adapted from a very, very long sci-fi poem of the same name. And mm. it's about uh, a like cruiser ship in space taking people from the earth, which is destroyed to Mars. And then mm. a little bit of, of space rock hits the hole and they have to jettison all of their fuel. And then it is the story of what happens on this massive ship as they're drifting through space forever. Um, one of the most hopeless movies I've ever seen. It has everything that I love. <laughs> What's it from? Like a couple of years ago. It's pretty recent. Mm -hmm. um, and it it's like uh, you get caught smoking the Solaris cigarette and then Tarkovsky makes you smoke the whole pack. Mm -hmm. That's Aniara. Um, really delightful. I, if you want to feel fucking terrible, has some of the craziest <laughs> time jumps in a movie. Uh, there are so many like interesting ideas in it and some great performances and it's gay. But with everything that I just said, um, it's not going to go well for them. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I, I spe keep thinking spell about the it. title. If you A-N-I-R-A. Uh, A-N-I-R-A. I'd be curious what you think of it. I think there are parts you'd have a hard time with, but it's not like it's gory. It's just upsetting. That sounds upsetting. Yeah, very existential horror. Um, really well done. I highly recommend it. It's definitely up there in terms of like fucked up even for me. So mm -hmm. that's always a very exciting thing say, to feel. I can probably need to pass on that one, but yeah. All right. Well, fair. That's what's popping for me. It's free on Tubi. Oh, nice. With ads. Great. So yeah, that's what's popping for me. What's popping for you, Brian? Well, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum because I'd like to recommend a very cute and very fun video game oh. that my entire family's been enjoying. I'm talking about Astrobot, which is on the PS5 and is basically a larger version of the free Astro's Playroom game that comes with it. This I don't game know is what so that is. It's uh you play a little robot that bops around and uh you know interacts in cute environments with cute enemies and does little dances occasionally. It's incredibly cute and fun and sweet and just it's not that challenging although there are a couple of harder levels. It's just pure joy in a Aww. video game. It's like Audrey loves it, Rachel loves it, I love it. It's great. And there's like cute music, the graphics are fun, you're rescuing robots, um, and they all have different little personalities and do little dances, and it's just a, a, a pure, adorable gaming experience. I love it. 
and uh audrey is constantly like daddy you gotta come look at that you know there's and it actually is the kind of game where we would call uh, similar to super mario wonder in this regard audrey and i would be playing together and be like rachel you have to come in here and see this right now it's so cute like you know there's like a dancing uh there are different like kind of uh what's the word it's devices or gimmicks that you have in different levels like one you have one that shrinks you and you can start crawling through like mouse holes and you know tiny little, little things holes? another one through little holes yep tiny little holes uh there's another one where you have a, a chicken on your back that shoots like a jet pack another one that gives you frog hands that you can clamp like that your finger get tired there is that what happened i don't know what you're talking about uh -huh. Nothing changed. Literally Skipping. nothing changed. Brian's making Quitter. shit up. Quitter. Brian's how making I would describe you right now. Brian is making shit up right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, Astrobot on the PS5. Really fun, really cute game. Hmm. That's good to know. Mm-hmm. That's a great poppin'. Well. Yeah, it really is. That's... Actually, I should. Yeah, you know, I should have done another one, which is relevant to the thing you claim not to be doing. But. Uh oh. You know what? I'll do it here. Uh, the Apple TV Plus series Bad Monkey, starring Vince Vaughn. Uh, it's uh, based on a Carl Hyacin, 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 however you say his name, uh, book. And like everything it takes, he writes, it takes place in Florida. And it's just fun, like kind of dark comedy uh, detective thing with a really, really good Vince Vaughn who is playing... A Vince Vaughn type, but in a very fun and uh, slightly less grating than normal way. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I guess I, I was say, surprised to hear you say something positive about a thing with Vince Vaughn. I'm not. I mean, I, I like you know old school and some other Vince Vaughn stuff. I generally find him uh, self satisfied and exhausting. Uh, I really like him in this show. Uh, actually, I, I think the show is great. Um, it takes place in Key West and Miami and the Bahamas, and it's got Rob Delaney, Vince Vaughn, uh, a couple other great actors, uh, and I, I just, I think it's a fun, easy to watch show, which is genuinely funny and kind of, and actually like oddly good natured in oh, a way. Okay. Like what I like, what I like, I'll tell you what specifically what I like about Vince Vaughn on the show is he's doing his glib, like sort of sarcastic Vince Vaughn thing, but he is also constantly telling his friends and coworkers and whatever, and you know, that he loves them and is there for them and is just being kind of open in a way that you're not used to Vince Vaughn being. So he's coupling the like sort of sarcastic thing with a genuine emotional openness, which is a lot sweeter than a character you typically see him play. And it 100% works. I think, yeah, like the one thing that I kind of, it's a bad movie. It is not a good movie, but the movie Freaky, that's basically like, I've been wanting to see that. Yeah. I think you'd enjoy it. Alan Ruck is in it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think him playing as I am a teenage girl is really charming in that movie, mm -hmm. even if I don't like the movie. In Googling Carl Hyacin, I am sh i shouldn't be surprised by this, but uh, they, they, they updated all of those like really iconic covers for Hoot oh, yeah. and Flush and Chomp. Yeah, those those old ones were nice. I mean, they look super dated now, but when I think about like school library, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. those. Mm hmm. Apparently those yep, are I've the only 2002 read edition. Lucky You is the only Hyacin book uh, I've read. Um, but yeah, Bad Monkey is really fun. I I, I, I like it a lot. Huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to know. All right. Now we've moved on to our final segment, which is three parts gratitude exercise and one part petty grousing. The name of this segment is Peaches and Lemons. And the theme song goes right here. Peaches and lemons. That was the theme song for Peaches and Lemons. Hell yeah, it was. Now it's time for us to do lemons. We will each do a thing that is a minor bummer or annoyance, and I'm going to break my own rule on lemons because the spirit mm. of lemons is that it's a minor thing that is like fun to bitch about, uh, not an actual real sad thing, but... Uh, my lemon for this week is that Aaron and Susie's cat Mochi passed away. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mochi was a very special little boy and we all loved him and he lived for 17 years, which is a crazy for a cat. Um, and he was just a great boy and it, I'm just sad about it. Uh, it's sad seeing Aaron and Susie sad and the other cats are sad and Mochi was my little buddy. I have so many yeah. videos and pictures of him and he was obsessed with my bags. Anytime I would go over there and bring a particular bag, he would just like go ape shit rubbing on that bag and mm. he would always try to steal food by slowly batting it off the edge of a table. I, all that shit. I, Mochi, I love you, buddy. Um, yeah, R.I.P. Mochi was, you know, Mochi is older than NSP. I've, I've, I've known Aaron. I've never known Aaron without Mochi. Yeah. Right? I, I met Aaron, I don't know, like in 2011 or 2012 or something like that. Yeah. I had Mochi. Like and Mochi I, I is not, so yeah. Mochi Aaron's is older cat. than Game Grumps. Mochi is older than everything, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, man. So yeah, that's my lemon. I love you, Moch. Uh, yeah, R.I.P. Uh, Brian, what's your lemon? Pour out some cat food for a real one. Uh, yeah. My lemon is, uh, as we have dis discussed on the show, uh, Daddy's not a great sleeper. I don't. Uh, you know, I can go to sleep pretty well. Staying asleep is a different matter. Um, I famously have uh, sleep apnea, but uh, the less detail is said about that, the better. Uh, let's just say when it works out, it really works out, but most of the time it doesn't work out. The uh, But I had an appointment with a sleep doctor. I was talking to my, I had a GP appointment, I don't know, a few months ago. I said, oh, make a appointment with a sleep doctor. Couldn't hurt. And I made an appointment with a sleep doctor. Oh, uh, first available is three months away. Okay, sure. Why not? Guess who canceled at the last minute? After waiting three months for this fucking appointment. And look, I get it. It happens. Are they Doctors rescheduling you for like next week or three months? I have to call them back. I was I, I just got the voicemail. Um, but they were like, oh, we could do a telehealth appointment. And I'm like, baby, I just wanted, I, I made this point three months in advance so I could go see this doctor. You know, come on, help a guy out. So I got to reschedule this and I hope it's not three months uh, from now. So that's my lemon. I, I, I get it. People get sick or they. <laughs> did you hear my what <laughs> did you do? Of course I heard that. What happened? She wanted passage to my living room, which is a little blocked off by this screen. And so I opened it so she could go. In. I didn't see it, but I think she might have stepped on my phone oh cord. My God. That, that dog's <laughs> pain threshold is vanishingly <laughs> low. It doesn't exist. She, My favorite is when she'll like do that thing where she scratches at her ear and she'll sniff it and she'll lick it. And she just sits there like the most content doing that. Mm -hmm. And then she'll like go too hard and scratch herself with a nail and then scream bloody murder mm -hmm. and bolt across the apartment for comfort. Yeah. Insane. This she's, has happened before. This happened three hours ago. How are she's you surprised? Really fucking dumb. She stepped on a cord. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's that's my lemon. I'm sorry. Yeah, I hope well, that you're able to get in with out. your doctor Yeah. to watch you sleep. Hmm. As we all know, we both have great experiences for with uh, people who are paid to watch you sleep. Yeah, well, normally I'm the one getting paid. Well, actually, not getting paid. It's just a volunteer position. But It's a living. It's a living. All right, now it's time for peaches, which are three things that are cool and fun and good. I will go first. Um, first one, since we talked about it. Got to have dinner with Aaron and go see The Substance. It's just a fucking joy. I love that guy to death. He's the best. He's the best. Um, my second peach is that I was feeling, res you know, I wear a lot of rings. I've gotten really into to jewelry over the past year. Um, and I was thinking about why aren't mood rings? You never see mood rings anymore. They were yeah, everywhere. That, it, it's like a 70s thing originally, right? I guess so. But I just remember them being very present in my childhood. Um, mm -hmm. And so I bought a mood ring, I guess I'll... I'll, I'll um, I'll put it on a finger so you can see it more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah, there it is. Is that purple? What color is that? I would say that's blue. Blue, okay. Right now, at least. But it's mm -hmm. it's a classy little... Um, yeah, so classy. Little, little piece, I think. Uh, and it's been fun. I haven't looked at the card of like what the colors mean 
uh, I'm just I am like ooh. If I oh, wash I'm my sure hands, it, it's scientific. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's been fun seeing it change colors based on temperature, uh, and so it's always like oh, it's a different color now. So that yeah. has brought me some joy. Uh, Brian hates it, and finally the biggest peach. Tomorrow I'm going to Halloween Horror Nights. Oh, nice. Aaron and Harry and Jory. Oh shit. Because unfortunately Susie can't make it, but yeah. I am very, very the very spooky excited. squad. The spooky squad. We're going for it. I am. It's the doing Knott's Berry or Halloween Horror Nights every year for the past few years has been the highlight of my year. So I am extremely excited. That's great. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Uh, what are your peaches? My peaches. I am coming back right now from a lunch with one Barry Kramer. Oh. Uh, a gentleman I don't get to see very often, but it's always great to catch up. So it's just nice, nice to see Barry. You know, we used to be in the office every day together and for years and now we don't we get to see each other like once or twice a year so it was nice yeah. to see him. i haven't seen him in uh, years i know he's great he's barry uh peach number two the trey holiday album is done fully mastered covers locked uh it's all it's it's done and so we're talking about i'm gonna print it as for physical i'm gonna do a 10 inch Ooh. Uh, which okay. yeah i know right so i gotta do that um i have to clear some covers i guess for that but yeah um the so that's exciting i love this album uh, uh at it, i think it's it really came out well i presume you have not had a chance to listen to it yet or i would be rolling in your congratulations but not I did yet send but it this, to you. the the songs that you have played for me are so good to the point that i wanted to surprise you with a idea that i had for a little social video for one of the covers mm. that you played for us that i talked oh, about yes, please i, I, like I wanted to, to like just make it without telling you and oh, give it great. to you okay okay but great. uh i don't know if i'm gonna do that but it's the one that i mentioned when we went to uh night and mark song and i got hit by a car uh okay and my final peach is that we have announced the next ninja sex party tour the Pure Elegance Tour. I will take full credit for coming up with that tour name. Of course. And uh, I like the... Did you see the the design for it? Did you see the graphic? No. Uh, I think it's pretty great. I really like the design on it. If you don't, that's fine. And I do want you to be honest with me. Has the cover art for the album changed since the one that you sent me? The, al the tray is slightly... I took your feedback, your very helpful feedback into account, right. and I will actually send you the final cover right now as well. Oh, very good. Okay, an image is loading. Oh, that looks, that's a great graphic. That looks really good. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. uh, the theme was strip club. Like pinks and... Yeah. I like it. All right, I'm sending you the tray cover as well. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, we didn't go on tour this year, and I'm excited to be on the road next year, excited to be on the road with Twerp. Uh, it's going to be just us and Twerp, and a couple cities will have some special other guests, which we have yet to announce. Um, many, some of which have been guests on the show, is all I'm going to say. Uh, one of which is... Uh, someone we've never played with before, but oh. I think it's going to be some exciting stuff, uh, and we will announce special guests when we deem it the right time. Wow. I'm totally not going to grill you on this after we finish yes. recording. Did you get the cover? Uh, oh, I was still staring at how great the pure elegance is. Look at that. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I took I all your feedback into account and I think it looks a lot better. So thank you for, for that. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, those are my, those are my peaches. I'm going to, I'm excited to be on the road again. I love touring and uh, it's going to be nice to be doing it. And we haven't announced these yet, but we will be doing more like Ninja Brian solo shows with me and I think various members of Twerp, maybe wow. some solo Phobos, Phobos, Phobos uh, Hawaiian stuff maybe uh, uh, i don't know if we'll get some solo sung it's a possibility 
We'll see. I'll probably be playing with Meowch on bass for Trey stuff. Who knows? That's exciting. Yep. I look forward to living vicariously through you touring with the twerp fellas. And it looks like it you have some nice be. breaks where you can be home in that stretch of dates. Yes. Well, it's that's right. It's a it's like a two weeks on and then a big chunk off, like a month or whatever, and then back on yeah. the road. So yeah. That's nice. That works. Good stuff. And those are my those are your three. Stuff. All right. Well, we that we we almost did a sort of like Halloweeny gimmick. A, bit. a little bit. We had some tricks. We had some treats. Uh, we had some sweets. Do you have any comments? I thought there was going to be there's going to be another part. No, I, I I definitely set it up like there was going. Uh, to be. Uh, they, my only comment is just I hope your fingers okay, because it really got to work out there for for a little bit. So I hope you had stretched uh, beforehand. Also, it's it's a bit so uh, not to to blow uh, a proverbial wad here, but uh, the thing that was going on in the video is Layton, and she'll deny this, was flipping me off for upwards of ten minutes. And it's ironic because normally that's my job, but oh, how the tables have turned and Brian. I being, being a, shut up, being a gentleman <laughs> of pure class, I would never, ever flip off my co-host. Oh, um, when you go see your sleep doctor, are they also going to check your doctor sleep? Actually, <laughs> when you go see doctor sleep, are they going to check out like your memory functions? Uh, they might. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I had those chips recently installed, so I think they should be okay. Okay. I would get that checked because whatever Brian is saying, and you can check the footage, I don't know what he's talking about. I think he's mm -hmm. he's doing a little projective identification, like a little counter transference on me, and that's mm -hmm. fine, but like you, you should figure that out yourself and not project yeah, well, it onto look, your co-host. Let's... Let's take this to the port, uh, the port of public opinion. The, court, <laughs> the port of public the port opinion. Of public opinion. <laughs> it's on title. the coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, it's a, it's yeah, a exactly. bunch of like bear cubs roiling over each other. Yes. And then they vote, you know. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to we're going to take this to the Internet, to the court of public opinion and see who they support, a man <laughs> or a woman. So the good luck. The port of public opinion. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really Paddington like Four, <laughs> the court of the. Now I can't say it right. The one. port of the public port opinion. Of public opinion. Yeah, it's when Paddington's tried by a jury of his peers for his crimes against humanity. Yes, and is put to death <laughs> at the end. That's right. It was a big musical number, and it's very, it's very sweet. <laughs> yeah, directed by Lars von Trier as a spiritual successor to <laughs> Dancer in the Dark. Lars von Trier's Paddington Four. That's a very, very funny idea. I watched yes. that. <laughs> Death by Marmalade. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of full frontal nudity in it. <laughs> That's a Paddington movie. Paddington baby. looks straight at the camera and says, Chaos reigns. Uh huh. Oh. It's great. Well, that's it. Bye. Um, yeah, see ya. Late Night is produced by Brian Wecht and Leighton Gray. Sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash night. Follow us on Twitter at at night, on Instagram at at underscore night, or email us at night at gmail.com. <laughs>